Hey everyone, this is Nick, and today we're going to talk about the JinkPad A1, the first tablet that's running a full-blown Linux OS made for tablets. And no, it's not running GNOME. GNOME is not designed for tablets. So I ordered this one back when they announced it, and I received it a few weeks ago, which means I had plenty of time to play around with the device, with its accessories, and see where it succeeds and where it fails. But you know what doesn't fail though? Today's sponsor, Linode. So Linode is a fantastic way to get your own Linux server up and running. It was rated the easiest cloud provider to use on G2, and it has been voted top infrastructure as a service provider by G2 and TrustRadius. Linode offers a ton of one-click deployable servers, like Owncast for example, which lets you run your own Twitch-like streaming service complete with video broadcast and chat, or Apache Guacamole. What's that you ask? Well, Guacamole is a fantastic way to get your own Linux desktop in the cloud that you can access from anywhere you want. And basically you can host that on Linode and get to any other computer and get access to that Linux desktop. It's pretty amazing. If you're more into gaming, you can also deploy your own Valheim or Minecraft server in one click. Linode has a ton of these one-click deployable apps. I use Linode to run my own Nextcloud server, which I use to run this whole channel, so I can't recommend them enough, especially since you can now create your account easily using Google or GitHub. And in the future, if you don't have a credit card, you'll be able to sign up using Google Pay as well, so that's one less barrier to get started. So if you want to get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server, well, head over to the link in the description below and click it. Okay, so this is going to be a review of the device and its software in its current beta form. I ordered it as a beta early adopter. So this thing is incomplete inside. The software experience is not perfect or finished yet. So keep that in mind throughout the review. But let's begin with the hardware first. So on that front, Jingling, the company behind the JingPad, really did an amazing job. The tablet itself is really high quality. It's glass on both sides with aluminium all around. It has an 11 inch display with a 4x3 aspect ratio that I definitely like better than widescreen 16x9 for a tablet. It's a really thin device at 6.7 millimeters and it weighs just under 500 grams. It's really a joy to handle and use and carrying it around doesn't make much of an impact on my bag or on my back and you really feel like there's been attention to details, like the very small raised edges around the display to lift it off slightly from the surface you've put it on to minimize scratches. The back of the device is covered in glass with an embedded Jing OS logo and the name of the product. It actually has a nice lozenge pattern that you don't really see at certain angles, but which looks really cool. It reminds me of the back of the Nexus 4. Now, old people like me will know that this is a great thing, as that phone was superbly well designed. Until my ex-wife took the bus, dropped it in the bus and demolished it. Now, you will also find pogo pins on the back, which are used at the moment for the keyboard case, which we'll talk about in a bit. On the top edge of the tablet, you have a power button, which is really flush with the edges of the device, a bit too flush, as it makes it tricky to find it if you're not really looking at which orientation the tablet is on. You also have a volume rocker on the right edge. The JinkPad uses USB-C to charge and transfer data, with the port located on the bottom edge. Now finally, on the left edge, you get a micro SD card slot to expand the storage. In terms of specs, the JinkPad A1 uses a Unisoc Tiger T7510. It's an 8-core system on a chip with 4 Cortex-A75 performance cores at 2 GHz and 4 Cortex-A55 efficiency cores at 1.8 GHz for less power-intensive tasks. Now, it is not a speed demon by any means. It's got half the single core score and 58% of the multi-core score of an Apple A13 Bionic chip, which is three or four years old at that point. It's also limited to eight gigabytes of RAM running at 1066 megahertz. Now that kind of performance isn't on par with the Pro tablets from the Fruit Company, but it should be enough to run any modern Linux OS because it's rated as being a lot more powerful than what a Pinebook Pro is coming with. And that thing can run Linux based operating systems really well. One day I will be able to review a Pinebook Pro, maybe. So on top of that chip, you get eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, as well as dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5. Now let's talk about the most important part of the tablet, and that is 
the display. In short, it's good, like really, really good. It's an AMOLED panel with a 2368 by 1728 resolution, which puts it at 266 pixels per inch. Basically, it's identical, just a teeny tiny bit higher than the iPad Pro. It gets bright, but not eye-searingly so, with 350 nits of brightness. The bezels around the display are just the right size, leaving enough space to grip the tablet without touching the screen itself. It's really a joy to look at. It has deep blacks, good color accuracy, and really nice viewing angles. Basically, if you're facing the display, the blacks completely melt into the bezels, and you're left with a super immersive experience. It's really a very good display. You also get two cameras, a front-facing one at 8 megapixels and a back camera at 16 megapixels. They're fine. The front-facing one will be enough for video calls and the back one should never be used because filming or taking pictures with a tablet is heresy unless you're trying to scan a document. The speakers are decent. Firing from both sides of the tablet. The spec sheet only mentions speakers on the bottom edge, but the top edge also has speaker grills and when you're holding the display in landscape, you definitely get sound coming from both sides. They're okay sounding, they definitely lack bass. They will be fine for watching a TV show or a movie, and they're more than enough to watch videos from your favorite YouTuber. Okay, so let's move on to the software. And there's no two ways about it, it is not finished, it is not ready by any means. It is, though, beta quality software from a beta unit that I got first because I signed up to be in the beta early adopter program. So keep in mind that most things that are broken can be fixed through software updates and I would expect they will be. There is a lot of promise here though. The default interface is pretty nice and really well designed for tablets. You have your grid of applications, a favorites dock at the bottom, and some indicators on the top edge of the screen. Swiping down from the top left edge brings the notification center, and swiping down from the top right edge brings the quick settings. You can long press an app icon to drag it and change its position, or you can add it to the bottom dock. Finally, a swipe up from the bottom edge will minimize the app you're currently running, and a long swipe will bring a view of all your open apps. The default selection of apps is all right, with a media player for music and videos that you've imported on the tablet, a file manager that's decently designed and lets you do anything you'd want to do, including renaming, moving, copy-pasting, tagging, compressing, and even opening folders in the terminal. Like, seriously, it puts the file manager of the iPads to shame, and that's just the first beta release. You also get a very basic calendar that can sync with any online account, as well as a clock, voice memo and calculator app, plus a basic photo viewer. The clock lets you set alarms, timers and run a stopwatch. The voice memo was only useful to help me test the mic quality. It's okay, but you wouldn't want to record a podcast or anything on it. And the calculator is plain broken, as the results cannot display anything other than full, complete numbers, no decimals or anything. Apart from that, you get Chromium as the default browser, console, the KDE terminal app, a settings app and the Jing OS store. In terms of settings, it's pretty bare bones. You have the absolute essentials like airplane mode, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and securing the device with your password. Interestingly, the power button is also supposed to be a fingerprint reader, but for now, in terms of software, there is no way to configure it to recognize your print or use that to unlock the device. You can also switch to a dark or light theme, which requires a reboot of the tablet for some reason, and you can manage the brightness, change the font family, but not the font size, and you can also change the wallpaper and the language, although you're limited to English or Chinese. It's really basic, and most of the settings you will want to access regularly are in the quick toggles anyways. Now you might think that this is overly negative, but it's really not. For the short time that the dev team has been working on Jing OS, it's still pretty well advanced and the foundations are here for something amazing and most of the issues will be fixed and can be fixed through software updates. Speaking of issues, let's look at some that I encountered. Generally, there's a lack of responsiveness when doing anything. You get the feeling that the tablet doesn't have hardware acceleration yet, and that every action is lagging behind your finger. The on-screen keyboard misses taps and touches, and the animations are stuttery. When scrolling, you get screen tearing, which is another thing that makes me think that hardware acceleration isn't implemented yet. It doesn't support any other orientation than this one, and rotating the tablet doesn't do anything, there is no portrait mode. The battery life is pretty poor at the moment, 
It's coded for 9 hours, but I can barely get 4 while watching YouTube. There is an update coming in a week though, which should address this specific concern. But these are all issues that can be fixed in software given enough time, so I'm not really worried. What really annoyed me though is the lack of software, like usable software. The Linux haters will probably say that this is a problem with all Linux distributions, but I completely disagree with that. Linux software is amazing. It's just that Jing OS cannot run it or can't run it well. The App Store is barren for now. You can't install much. Actually, this is all you can install graphically. Out of all these apps, I'd say only WPS Office looks right and optimized for a tablet. The rest are desktop applications that have menu bars, super small buttons and interfaces, and are generally unusable on that display unless you use a mouse. Now, I tried to be a smartass, and since JingOS is based on Ubuntu, I used the terminal to install GNOME software. While it launches and works, it runs terribly, and it shows the biggest problem here. There is no scaling applied to anything at all. The JingOS apps are correctly sized for a tablet, but anything else is incredibly small, as it is displaying at the display's resolution, which is really high for an 11-inch display. With a default scaling of 1.5 or 2x, everything should be perfectly fine, and most, if not all, these apps would be usable. As of now, they're really not. Now, fortunately, the apps that you install through GNOME software show up on the home screen, which is not the case of the apps I tried to install through Flatpak or the web apps I tried to pin using Chromium. The lack of any kind of syncing with an online account was also a bummer, as I could not sync with my Nextcloud files or Nextcloud calendars, and Google users won't be able to sync with anything they use either. Now, the Jinkpad was also supposed to support Android apps, but for now, that's not the case. The method you could use previously on the review units doesn't work on this beta testing one just yet, and no Android apps are available through the store. It should come soon in the software update though, I'll keep you posted. And oh boy, I can't wait to play Red Shadow Legends on that thing! And no, uh, it's, it's a joke, don't quit, this video isn't sponsored by Red Shadow Legends, I don't play that game, D don't leave yet. So, for now, basically, the ThinkPad will live in complete isolation from your other devices, which isn't great for a tablet. But all these issues are also pretty easy to remedy through software fixes. Now, to finish this review, let's talk a bit about the accessories. The tablet is provided with a case that attaches magnetically and allows you to protect its front and back and also use it at various angles. You've got an almost laptop-like position, a more content-watching position, and you can push it all the way for something more useful for drawing or typing. The case is made out of fake leather, and while it did smell pretty strongly out of the box, the smell dissipated after a few hours. It's a solid case, even though it basically doubles the thickness of the device. It also has a little tab on the side that allows you to magnetically attach the pencil, included with all jink pads. You can also get a keyboard attachment that makes use of the pogo pins on the back. It's a very rigid keyboard, but as with all keyboards made for an 11 inch screen, the keys are very, very small and typing comfortably on this will take time. It's got a pretty good feel though, and it's made out of metal and the included trackpad works perfectly well, adding an iOS-like round mouse cursor to the system apps. non jingos apps will have a regular mouse cursor though. This trackpad also supports gestures to open the app switcher, for example, and it's got a row of function keys and a super key with the jingos logo. For now, it seems to only be available as a QWERTY layout. It's a good accessory. It's got a nice little kickstand to balance it out when using it in your lap. It's, it's nice to use. And finally, you get the Jinkpad pencil which is a stylus that supports multiple pressure levels and can be used to navigate the operating system and apps. Now, most of you probably already know that I am an excellent illustrator, so let's take a look at what we can do with this thing. Okay, so my horrendous graphical skills aside, this pencil is actually very precise. When you hover over the screen, you see where it's going to impact, and the drawing is precise, but the latency is just not on par with what you would get on a Samsung, Apple, or Surface device. But it's still going to be very useful as long as these non jingos apps have not been updated to be scaled, because for now, clicking on those pesky menus and buttons is going to require a very precise instrument. So, after a few weeks with this device running the beta version of JingOS and that I paid with my own money, am I satisfied? Not yet. This device cannot solve my use case for now. But the good news is, it will be able to. Through software updates, all the quirks and the problems can be fixed, 
there is no hardware related issue with this device. It's got the power, it's got the looks, it's got the display, it's got the accessories. All it needs is more time to perfect the software. But it does mean that for now, if you're buying it, you're buying a promise. You're not buying a fully finished experience. That promise can be realized if the Jingo S team can deliver on those software updates. And seeing as they already made a perfectly good first draft of an operating system designed for a tablet, in very little time, I have no doubt that they can achieve this. For now though, it's not really ready. Now, this video was made possible by Slimbook, and if you're a long-time watcher of the channel, you already know all about them, but if you don't, they're a Linux laptop and desktop manufacturer. They're based in Valencia, Spain, and they sell devices for all price points with all keyboard layouts they ship worldwide. They basically have a device for every single use case. I only use their stuff nowadays. If you're looking for a device running Linux out of the box, check the link in the description below. Slimbook has really good stuff. Now, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe. And if you didn't, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you don't like YouTube, you can also watch all my stuff on Odyssey. And if you want to help support the channel, you can support me through Patreon or YouTube and you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.